introduce ourselves first. Yeah. So I'm Nikki. I'm the senior executive director from the um, Morning Point Louisville campus here on Hurstbourne Parkway. Yeah. And I'm Kelly Miller. So I'm one of the <clears throat> community relations directors. Um, so my job and then my teammate's job, her name is Cindy Stivers, who wasn't able to be here this morning because she's meeting with some families. But our job is to help educate families um, and potential residents about what it is that we do on our campus and answer a lot of questions, which I think that we're going to be doing for you guys this morning. So, And on our campus, we have two buildings. Um, one building is personal care, or what you could um, call assisted living, and the other building is memory care. So we were going to show you a video about Morning Point and our specific property, and then afterwards we'll have some chats and take some questions and share a little bit of information with you. All right. At Morning Point Senior Living, we help residents get the care they deserve and enjoy the lifestyle they expect. In fact, every detail in this expansive, single-level community is geared for just that. From the open living areas for entertaining and socializing inside and outside, the historic murals across the walls, to the dining areas where many gather for good food with good friends, the trained culinary staff work to satisfy unique personal tastes and dietary needs, often using fresh seasonal and local ingredients through our farm to table program. Morning Point's life enrichment program helps seniors stay connected to the communities they love while learning new hobbies and making new friends, keeping us looking forward and involved. Physical, occupational, and speech therapy on-site helps to promote independence. Residents can personalize their own apartments, further adding to their sense of belonging and overall wellness. Intentional safety measures cover every aspect of the open floor plan and throughout the entire building. At Morning Point Senior Living, it's not about giving up what you love. It's about getting the care and assistance you need so you can enjoy your life to the fullest. That's what we do. Morning Point helps mom or dad live their very best as they age. And we help you. What we see most often is we're at a point of crisis. We're, we're in the hospital, we've broken a hip, or we, we've become ill, we've been in the hospital, or we're in a rehab. And now we need to, we don't want mom or dad to go home. We need to figure out next steps. And we're kind of in a crisis mode. And um, I always discourage that. Um, I believe in being proactive and ahead of it. Um, and it's interesting because my brother and I actually had a conversation last night about our dad. Um, our dad just turned 66, very, very healthy, um, physically fit and all of that. No big concerns, but started to notice a little bit of some, some memory, which we, we will see in aging in general. So I don't have any fear that my father has dementia, but just a little bit of a concern there. And so I said to my brother last night, I said, this is what I do for a living. And we don't want to wait until dad is at a point where he can't participate in the decision of where he's going to live, like that we have to make that decision for him. Um, so I always encourage to be proactive and ahead of it, even if this is so far down the line. But just to kind of get your your um, options available to you, because what I what I see a lot of, and I know that you see in marketing, mm -hmm. is that people assume this is a nursing home environment, and that's the biggest misconception about what we do in personal care. This is not a nursing home. From the video, it's a home. This is your home, and we want people to be able to move into this place not under duress. We want you to move in because you want to, because you want to prepare for your next stages of life and live in a comfortable environment. So I believe when our parents retire, it's time to start talking about it. It doesn't mean that it's happening tomorrow. It doesn't mean that it's happening in six months, but begin the discussions. What do you want? Because when we get to a certain point where we're either dealing with dementia or really critical health issues, our parents can't always participate in that conversation and share with us what they want. Um, and so I encourage having those, those chats now um, and they're hard, you know, it's, I've been doing this for almost 10 years, but now that I have to do it with my dad and my mom, it's different and it feels a little bit harder for me, but I'd rather do it now knowing what I know down the line for my parents. A really big thing that we see um, in this field is caregiver syndrome, and that is loved ones taking care of their loved ones. And I think there's this, this sense of duty and responsibility, mom or dad raised me and now I have to give back. 
and, and it is our responsibility, but you have to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And when your own health begins to decline because you're giving everything you have to mom, dad, grandma, whatever it is, it becomes really stressful. We see um, problems in relationships because mom moved in with us and now my relationship with my husband or my wife is declining. Um, you have to take care of yourself because you cannot take care of your loved one. And we don't want to see you get to the point where you're so stressed out that you show up at our front door and here's mom, just <laughs> please take her. We want you to make that an easy transition for everyone. So when, it's when we start talking about living with our loved one, that's when we should definitely start talking about what are our next steps and what are our options. Yeah. Because caregiver syndrome is real. We see it's it all real. the time. <laughs> lots is. of tears, lots of hugs. I always say that my job is executive director, but also part-time therapist. Because people are coming to us and they're struggling with that decision. There's a lot of guilt. Because I've been providing the care for mom all this time, and now I'm saying I can't do it and I'm, I'm abandoning her. Well, you have to take care of yourself. Um, and that is vital to, to, to get your life back. We've helped, I, I think, about Trish and moving her dad in because he had dementia and what a toll it had taken on her life, taking care of her dad and then be able to get her life back was, was huge. And I think that's a really big factor that we don't talk about enough is caregiver syndrome and the impact of caring for a loved one on our personal lives. We don't talk about it because we feel selfish and guilty about saying it, but it's okay to say that this is too much. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for is to provide that support and, and um, give you some relief and give you a time out. You know, I think that one of the important things that we don't plan for is all of that little detail, like power of attorney, living wills. Um, you know, again, back to my parents, my mother travels the country with the camper. She's, you know, living the high life as a retired woman. Um, very, very physically fit, doesn't have any really profound health care concerns, but I'm on her bank accounts. I'm her POA. Um, we've gone through her living well together. I know what her wishes are. I know what her money can do for her from now till the end of her life. I don't have to be involved in any of that right now, but I am very informed so that if something happens to my mom tomorrow, I know what to do. I know how to access her bank accounts. I have that, that legal right to make decisions for her as mm -hmm. POA if she becomes incapacitated. Mm -hmm. But we've had some recent folks that we're moving in and those things hadn't been established yet. And again, we were kind of in crisis mode and having to scramble to get those kinds of things done. And it's um, a lot. It's just a yeah. lot. I mean, when you're in crisis, that's enough. But mm -hmm. when you've got to go back and then start, you know, creating all of these documents and having these pretty mm -hmm. serious conversations, it's just, it's a lot. But also like knowing what your insurance is going to be able to provide for you. Um, insurance isn't always going to tell us that there's the extra things that we can do for you. So we see families that are having to transport mom and dad to doctor's appointments all the time. A lot of times insurance will provide um, coverage for medical transports. And, that, and I don't mean an ambulance. I'm talking a van that comes to your home and picks you up and takes you to your doctor's office and then takes you home. Mm -hmm. A lot of times insurance will cover that. And if we're not aware of that, then you're, you're wasting money out of your own pocket. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the same thing with like long-term care insurance. A lot of folks come and talk to us about living with us and mm -hmm. here's what I have in my 401. And then they suddenly they mention, like, well, I do have a long-term care insurance plan. Well, we need to look into that and see yeah. what, how much money that's going to provide for you. Because a lot of times those are very generous um, coverages for, for you living in a facility like ours. So the little details we often overlook and just doing it now, again, my mom is 67, my dad is 66. We're nowhere close, but I am very informed. My brother and I know where everything is and what to do if something happens tomorrow. Yep. Um, and that's very comforting to me. Um, my brother felt like it was, well, this is over the top. Mom and dad are great. And I was like, but I work in this field. Mm -hmm. Please trust me on mm -hmm. this. And those are the details that we, we overlook and don't plan for because we want our parents to be physically fit forever. We don't want to accept that, you know, there's been declines and we've had a stroke or whatever it is. It's very hard to accept those things. So I'd rather plan for it today, knowing that something's going to happen in the future with my parents. We actually have a lady that, well, actually, we have two sisters that live together on our campus. Mm -hmm. One is in our personal care community and one is in our memory care community. Neither one of those ladies married. Neither one of them have children. So they have best friends who are they that act as their power of attorney. Mm -hmm. So I would work on those things now while you have the capability to make those decisions and appoint people that you trust. 
um, because in a lot of cases, too, we have people that come to us that don't have these things in place, and cognitively, they can't make good decisions about who they want to be making decisions about their finances or who, who they even want to give access to their finances. So, you know, in a situation like that, unfortunately, sometimes we have to refer them to the courts and they have to get emergency guardianship. And nobody wants to have to do that unless you absolutely have to. So, you know, back to uh, Nikki's point, it is important for you to have these conversations. I had to have this conversation with my mother when I was 30 years old because mm -hmm. my father passed away. And so I don't live near my mom. And so, you know, I had already been in senior housing for years and I was like, okay, so we're going to get all this stuff in place. Um, I am now your power of attorney along with my brother. We need to talk about your living will. We have a trust set aside. Um, and then we, I also got her in contact with a financial advisor that lives in the town that we're from, and she now has a long-term care policy. And I was very verbal about, I want this long-term care policy to cover assisted living and nursing home care and potentially in-home care. So, you know, it's, you got to get on those things and have those conversations way ahead of time. And unfortunately, some people just wait too long because it's not a fun conversation to have. It's not stuff that you like to sit down and talk about, um, but it's stuff that you have to talk about. What are the obstacles that we deal with? Like, we'll have families come to see us and mom's not ready yet. Well, why isn't she ready? She just loves her house. We have to talk about those things because I get that mom's not ready, but she probably is physically ready. Um, we have to talk through those obstacles and play a little bit of devil's advocate. And I shared this with her the other day. Um, I was did, did a training a long time ago and that, that came up. Well, mom loves her home. Well, the rebuttal is kind of, I know she loves that home, but that home doesn't love her back anymore because the front steps are three steps and she can't manage the steps. The laundry's in the basement and she can't manage the home in general. So I get that she loves the home, but that lo home is not loving her back anymore. And we need to help her out, whether it's modifying the home or c talking about selling the home and moving. Mm -hmm. So we, we deal with a lot of those obstacles and we have to really, the big challenge is the, is the children are often the challenge because they don't want to push on mom or dad. They don't. Or they've promised them that they're never going to move them in. Don't mm -hmm. ever do that. Yeah, don't ever promise <laughs> those things. <laughs> don't promise your family members that you're going to never move mm -hmm. them into a community. Promise them that you will take care of them based on the needs that they have. Um, we have to understand the fear that they're having about why they don't want to make that move. Yeah. And something that I talk about when I sit down with families to sign the agreement about moving into our building is we have a section in our agreement that's called the resident rights. And I always stop for a minute and talk through that because one of the biggest fears for an individual moving into our facility is I'm losing all my freedoms. I don't have any rights anymore. My, my children have taken everything from me. My car has gone. I don't have any independence anymore. And I take some time to talk about resident rights because it's really the opposite. Just because you're moving into my facility and you don't drive your car anymore and it's not your home that you had for 40, 50 years, you still have your autonomy. And by that, we mean if you don't want to participate in activities today, we're not going to force that. If you don't want to take your medicine today, we're going to talk about why you should take the medicine, but ultimately I'm not going to force anything upon you. If you question your care, we have to stop and involve you in that and answer your questions and make you feel better about it. But we don't just say you will do this and you will do that. There is no loss of freedom and rights to moving into a place like this. I think we too often, back to what I said at the beginning, associate a place like Morning Point as being a nursing home. And nursing home, that, that phrase now is very has very negative connotations mm -hmm. with it. Yep. Places like Morning Point and a lot of our competitors are not nursing homes. It is your next home. Mm -hmm. And we purposely have our buildings looking like a home. We, we have nurses, we have caregivers in our building, but the building as a whole feels like a home. We don't call the apartment your room. It's your apartment. It is your home. Well, thank you again so much for your time. It was wonderful to be able to, to share with you all today.